Hey, welcome back again. It's January the 19th. Uh, we're continuing our journey through the book of Genesis, through Psalms, through the Gospel of Mark. Today we're reading Genesis 32, 33, and 34. That's three chapters. And we're reading Psalm 145 and Mark 13. That's five chapters today. It seems like a lot, but uh, I think you'll find the time is about the same amount of time to read. Uh, we're going to jump in and continue on. It's been a lot of fun for me so far as I've been talking through the book of Genesis with you. Uh, soon we're going to enter the book of Exodus, which is a lot of fun, especially early in the book of Exodus, as we see the people struggle through the slavery in Egypt and they come out and they go through the wilderness. It's a, it's a fun time to read. Uh, before long, we're going to get into um, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, some of these things that are a little less fun, but I think we're going to be able to full, pull some neat concepts out to talk about what the kingdom of God looks like and what God's purpose is for us in life. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it, actually. I hope you'll continue on every day with me journeying here. In Genesis 32, 33, and 34, we see Jacob make a return. He's going to return to his brother. He's going to go back home, be reconciled to Esau with his family and, and servants, the things he's amassed now. He's going to return to, um, uh, well, not quite to Bethel yet. That's chapter 35. It's coming up soon. But in Genesis chapter 32, there's a moment that Jacob goes to sleep for a night, and he has this, this wrestling with God. He wrestles with God, and in the middle of the night, he struggles with God, and God uh, sends this, um, sorry, this, uh, I totally blanked out here, uh, this, this angel touches God, uh, Jacob in the, the hip socket and wrenches his hip out of place. And in the middle of this com uh, conflict, this struggle right here, Jacob is asked what his name is. And he says, my name's Jacob. And the man says that he wrestled with God, says, your name will no longer be Jacob, but it will be Israel. Because you struggle with man and with God, you've overcome. You've been strong, you persevered, you've not given up when things were hard. He changes Jacob's name to Israel, what he'll be known by through the rest of his life. Now, there's something about names. And this is what I was going toward here. And I'm sorry I got tongue-tied a minute ago. Um, just so you know, when we do these videos here, I'm just kind of reading the word and talking to you about what it says. There's not a lot of prep and planning right here. Um, I want you to know there's nothing special about this. You can do these same things. When, when Jacob has his name changed, though, there's a special thing about that. You see, uh, names mean something. Abram became Abraham. Sarai became Sarah. Uh, later on, uh, we see Saul become Paul. Um, God, or Jesus calls Simon, Peter. We see names happen. These, these name changes that go on in the scripture. And they always have a purpose. And they always point people back toward what God wants for their life. I want you to know that when you were born, your parents chose to name you something. Some of us, our, our names might mean a lot. Your parents might have put a lot of thought. There's a trend, especially in recent times, of Christian parents putting all this thought into naming their children these names that have a meaning. Uh, some of us, though, didn't have that. We just got a, we got a family name. It's been passed down through the generations. Or we got a name that sounded, it rolled off the tongue nicely and worked well. We all get named in different ways. But when we follow Jesus... When we follow Jesus, he gives us a new identity. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, that I started following Jesus, and when I started following Jesus, I stopped being that name and started being Adam. That didn't happen. I was Adam from the time I was born. But when you follow Jesus, he gives you a new identity. Your old identity is broken. Your old identity is mired in sin. It is, it is fraught with temptation. Your old identity has a reputation for not being someone who lives in a godly way. And when you begin to follow Jesus, he gives you a new name. In the book of Revelation, it talks about how we are, have a, we're given a white stone with a new name written on it that only God and us know. Names mean something. And I want to encourage you, if you've given your life to Jesus, stop thinking of yourself by the reputation that you were known as before you knew Jesus. And start thinking of yourself only by what Jesus says you are. 
You're a daughter, you're a son, you're an heir to his kingdom, you're a prince, a princess, you're an ambassador, you're an emissary, you're a servant, you're a leader, you're a preacher, you're a follower, a disciple. Start thinking of yourself in terms of the new identity Jesus gives you. Because when you can embrace what God knows you as, then you can begin to live like that reputation demands. Stop falling back into Satan's lies and live in God's truth and his promise. Just like Jacob becomes Israel, you became the son, the daughter of the king. Join me tomorrow. We'll keep reading through the book of Genesis together. It's going to be great. Until I see you then, you are sent.